Welcome to the award-winning Friday Night Sports Zone, brought to you by Generations Physical Therapy. Get ready for all the plays, all the scores, and some great fan action. Now, here's Anna Tarullo and Jake Siegel. Well, good evening and welcome to the Generations Physical Therapy Friday Night High School Sports Zone. I'm Anna Tarullo alongside Jake Siegel for a recap of week 11 of high school football in the Tri-State. That's right, Anna, and it is the regular season finale right here on the Friday Night Sports Zone. A lot of playoff hopes on the line, and don't go anywhere because we've got an action-packed show for you tonight. That's right. Now, like tonight's Friday Night High School Sports Zone Game of the Week, Capital at GW, winner securing a first round home game in Triple A playoffs. Offense was slow moving for both sides tonight at Edwards Field. We picked this one up in the first quarter, 0 to 0. Capital starts with possession. Evan Landers drops back and slings it to carry on Martin for the first down there. Now, later on, it's going to be the same. Capital drive after we get a little band action there. Evan Landers looking to throw, but not to him. That's GW's Alex Mazalon with the pick. GW on offense now starting to wind down the first quarter. 345 left. Quarterback Robert Alexander steps back and lets it fly to one of his favorite targets, Isaac Isabel. Beautiful pass, beautiful catch, but it wouldn't count. I believe it was a holding call there. So still scoreless at the end of the first. Final score tonight, GW 20, Capital 16. All right, good one right there, Anna. Mm -hmm. Senior night over at South Charleston. Kicker Nick Workman, one of the four members of the Eagle, Black Eagles eldest class. Tonight, SC would try to take down Cabell Midland, which many, according to many, that is, are the number one team in Class 3A. First nice drive of the game, Jacob Cardell plunges his way into the end zone for six. Cabell Midland goes on top 7 0. Now, Cardhill could win State Player of the Year by the time 2019 wraps up. That's something we're watching. Head coach Luke Salmons, with such a good offensive mind all season long, draws up a great play call here. It's going to be a misdirection, and it goes to Jackson Petty, who just outruns the entire South Charleston defense. This makes it 13 zip with the Knights ahead. Say it ain't so. Cavill is 10 0, and no one want to face them. The Knights led the Black Eagles 55 14 entering the fourth quarter. They go on to blow out South Charleston 62 21, the final score. And it was senior night at the game between the Spring Valley Timberwolves and the Huntington Highlanders. We'll pick this one up. The action up in the third quarter here. Now down 19 0 in the third. The Highlander defense gives their offense a chance when they stuff the Timberwolves' offense on third down. Highlander offense wouldn't fare much better when T.A. Blackwell goes nowhere on this play. The, Not the, a. The yellow jerseys get me. I, I know. They look Cold like mustard. might have been affecting some things there, too. <laughs> Both teams in the second half because Nathan Ellis completely misses his target on that pass. But after a blocked punt, the Highlander offense would eventually find the end zone to cut the score to 19 to 8 after the two point conversion. Now it's Timberwolves on top tonight, 19 to 11. All right. Riverside hosting Greenbrier East. We're going to pick it up scoreless in the second half. Greenbrier's Kyle King going to change that right here. And then I got there pretty late, but not late enough, obviously, because mm -hmm. I saw him score. That would set the tone as the boys from Green, Greenbrier East steal this one from Riverside 25-6, the final score. And we're off to a good start here in week 11 of the Friday Night High School Sports Zone, Jake. Yeah, but that's right. As we mentioned, don't go anywhere. we got more highlights and scores coming up after this timeout. Flies when you're having fun and Anna, it's the final week of the high school football season. It. It's tough. It's really tough to believe, mm -hmm. but it's here. <laughs> a lot of equally matched battles tonight, like one in double A, Jake. That's right. Roan County at Sissonville. We're not sure if that 20 yard line is the 20 yard line marker or the degree temperature. Maybe both. Roan County first quarter action. It's the reverse play. Shot great house to Daniel Bush. And he goes to Isaiah Isaac Ryan. Ryan with a huge gain inside the red zone for Roan County. A couple plays later, six foot 200 pound running back and Joshua Huffman straight up the gut. It's a TD. The kick was good. Raiders go on top 7 0. Still in the first quarter, Sissonville with the ball. Jackson Foster with the QB keeper. He's going to break off a quick 10 yard run. And there'll be 10 seconds left in the quarter. Now they would run a quick trick play. And a little shuttle pass down to Dylan Griffith, who emerges with the ball, and he gone, Anna. He that's gone. A, that's a touchdown. He's dancing <laughs> in the house. The kick was good. The game through the end of the first half was tied at 7-7. Roan County goes on to win a big one tonight, 20-7. And coming up next, Dylan Fernandez here rocking it at Hurricane in St. Albans. We picked this one up. It is 10-0. Redskins second quarter. Hurricane running back Christian Hill takes the handoff, goes up the middle, throws a St. Albans defender out of his way for the nice gain there. Get out of my way. That's what he told him. Quarterback Ismael Barrero dumps it off to Abel Cunningham. 
couple jukes, jumps into the end zone for a 17 nothing hurricane lead. Great effort. Great effort by the Redskins. They've been pretty good this year. And coming up here, St. Albans hadn't been able to get anything going on offense, but Hunter Payne, you're going to see right here, take it up the middle and goes all the way 71 yards, making it 17 6. Hurricane. But Hurricane, they're not going anywhere. He brought the pain tonight he against St. Albans. House right? of I mean. pain. <laughs> Good for them. Get on the boards. Now, Hurricane, they're going to answer right back, though. Christian Hill, he's going to get the 17 yard rushing TD, making it 24 6. Hurricane, and it's all Redskins tonight. Hurricane wins this one 38 to 12. Well, the theme of our show, freezing, and that's exactly <laughs> what it was in Wayne County tonight. But the undefeated Polka Dots were trying to stay hot with a win. Ooh. Early first quarter, the Dots defense setting the tone, forcing an early three and out on Wayne's opening drive. And Polka's offense would take it from there when Jay Cook connects right here to Toby Payne. The beautiful connection and bomb allows wide out to pick up a couple extra yards before going down. And it would set up this 20 yard run by Ethan Payne, also bringing the ah, pain tonight. Lots of pain. And he turns on the Jets right there to give Polka an early advantage in the first. Now, Polka's still undefeated. The Dots defeating Wayne tonight, 32 0. Great season for them. Next up, we got Mingo Central and Winfield. We picked this one up 0 to 0 in the first quarter. Mingo Central quarterback Dalen Goad, quick slant pass to Drew Hatfield. Fumbles recovered by Winfield's Caden Beam there. Now, Winfield, they will be able to capitalize on that Mingo Central fumble as John Cover goes up the middle and dives in for the touchdown. 7 0 Winfield. This was supposed to be the most evenly matched game of the night. Absolutely. And Winfield has been good this season. I was at two of their games. Both of them were victories. So you, you said, you know, you're pretty right on that. Mm -hmm. Winfield driving again here. Quarterback Nicholas Vance. Nice sideline pass to Hunter Morris. First down for the Generals. Now, just a couple plays later here, we'll see running back John Covert takes the direct snap and rumbles in for the TD. 14 0 Winfield. Now, next series. Oh, sirens going there. Next series, but second quarter now. Mingo Central needs an answer, and they get it. Dalen Goad throws a dart to Isaac Scales, and he takes it in untouched. 14 Winfield, Mingo Central 7. Now, the Miners do go on to win tonight, 55 to 20. And we're not done yet. We check out some playoff action when we're back. That's right, we're going to have your first round highlights against a pretty good Blazer and Green of County matchup and Betsy Lane taking on Raceland. We'll have those highlights when we come back. Almost through week 11, but still more games to get to tonight. That's right, Anna. We're going to take it to the Bluegrass State for some first round playoff action. Oh. That is correct. It was a chilly night at Putnam Stadium for the playoff game between Ashland and Green Up County. Now, Ashland has the advantage of playing on their home field for the first round of the playoffs. Let's see how these two teams matched up at the start of the first quarterback. First quarter, Tomcats have possession. Jake Gregg hands the ball off to Keontae Pittman, who goes on the outside, sprinting down the field and into the end zone for the TD. Extra point would be good. 7 0 Ashland. Now, next, Tomcats possession here. Blake Hester gets the ball, looking to go straight, running into defense. Hester takes the ball around the defensive line into the corner of the end zone for another TD. Extra point. Good. Tomcats lead 14 0. Ashland is starting off strong, and they keep that momentum. And I'm going. Tomcats will see their next possession again. First quarter, Jake Gregg looks to throw short. He makes the connection with Zane Christian, who runs the ball tumbling into the end zone for yet another TD. Extra point, good again. Score is 21 0. Ashland moves on in the playoffs. They win 49 to 14 tonight. All right, the last time Betsy Lane traveled down to face Raceland, Raceland won 67 to nothing. So, how would tonight's game go? Well, mm -hmm. Pretty much the same way, believe it or not. Uh, we're gonna. By the time we picked this up, it was a, they had a significant lead over the Bobcats in the first half. So in the second half, third quarter action, Raceland with possession up 57 to nothing. Connor Hughes gonna hand the ball off to Layden Newman. Newman makes some moves down the field, and Newman is into the end zone just like that. He goes in for the score. Raceland at this point would, would trail 60. They'd be up 64-0 and still in the third quarter. The Bobcats with it. Chase Mims looking to throw long. He makes the pass. He's intercepted by JT Melvin. The Rams are showing both their offensive and the defensive prowess this evening. Next Ram possessions, Connor Hughes going to get the football, and, the, and he's going to run right into the defense, but quickly getting out, sprinting downfield into the end zone. They're a team that's going to go far and into the playoffs. They are. They show no mercy tonight. They're all over the Bobcats. They win 71 to nothing. That is quite a score. Now, Jake, time now for our play of the night. All right. 
Tonight, it's coming from Cabell Midland as the Knights hand the ball off to Jackson Fetty, who gets a great misdirection here, and he's got reservations for six. For six. Those look like Ohio State uniforms. Speaking of them, they do, but they got the Michigan M on their helmets, right? Oh, my gosh. I also want to yeah, I I also want to give that the play call tonight. Well, we love it. Little misdirection. So. And tomorrow, speaking of college football at 3:30, right here on Channel 13, a battle of one versus two. LSU and Alabama headlining a huge weekend of college football for the first time in the AP poll era. There are two different matchups between teams that are eight and no. The other one being number four Penn State against number 17 Minnesota. So, Jake, Alabama, LSU, two prolific offenses. Who do you have? Well, I'm gonna take Alabama. I used to work in Alabama. I think two is finally gonna be healthy. They're the number two. They're the underdogs, but they're at home. I like Alabama by one point. Well, I have to counter with you here, even though the game is in Tuscaloosa, and go with LSU. One, because I love Coach O. <laughs> love that he was kind of thrown in there as interim in 2016, but they've stuck with him to great success. And two, because of a little guy named Joe Burrow, who not too long ago was playing on Friday nights just like this one right here in Southeast Ohio. So we've got that great action tomorrow, and Ohio State's playing tomorrow. Who do they have? Uh, Ohio State goes up against Maryland, a game that the, the Bobcats really should win. So, mm -hmm. and Marshall, Buckeyes, I'm sorry. Buckeyes. The Buckeyes, yeah, not the Bobcats, the Buckeyes. Marshall. Yeah, Marshall's off. They're on their bye week, but when they come back, they'll play La Tech. And we've got who? West Virginia's got. Well, West Virginia Texas State's. Tech. Yeah. Yep. That's right, yep. Well, the, cat, the Cats might be in action. And Marshall Soccer, they just had a big win today as they well. They did. They're Conference USA champs for the first time in school history. Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Well, that's all we've got for this edition of the Friday Night High School's. Sports show, but catch us on WWKTV.com for the post game show. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week.